Who are you? Whoever you want me to be. Don't say I never gave you anything. It's feeling epic. Three words. Eight letters. I remember everything. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Previously on Teen TV. I'm Jillian Banani. And I'm Claire Wojciechowski. And we have another very special episode for you today. We are back in the OBX, baby. We are continuing on our Outer Banks journey. We're going to be talking all about season three today. Since they have finally announced a date for season four, we've been waiting forever for this. Um, And season four will be coming back on Netflix with part one on October 10th. Yes, I am so excited. It does feel like we have been waiting literal years at this point. I know, like it has been. It has been. I mean, it's with the strike and everything. We've been waiting all summer because this is such a summer show. And I mean, we're getting it in the fall and it's a little disappointing, but you know what? We're getting part one and part two very close together. And so I will take it however, whenever we can get it. I'll be, you know, watching these Outer Banks ups in between my Gilmore Girls rewatch. Yeah. Um, so I can I can deal with the summer show in the fall. There you go. Yeah, small doses, five yes, and five. Maybe there'll be a pumpkin in the OBX. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, we have no idea. <laughs> they celebrate Halloween there, don't <laughs> they? <laughs> oh, God. Kids will be dressed up as the Pogues who found the treasure. Yeah, just dirty t-shirts and bandanas. (laughs) That's what I'm going to be for Halloween, maybe. Oh, oh, just like a crop top and denim shorts. Yeah, we should do a Halloween episode and we should just dress up as different characters. Oh my God, like like live with Kelly and Mark where they're every day of the week. It's a new pairing. Yeah, that'll be fun. Okay, we'll talk. As we said, it has been a while since season three came out. So Claire, give us a little refresh on what happened. All righty, season three, we pick up on the deserted island dubbed Poglandia six weeks after season two ends um, some guy named Jimmy comes he rescues the Pogues takes them to Barbados where Key is immediately kidnapped by some guy named Singh who apparently thinks that the Pogues have this diary that will lead to um, the location of El Dorado aka the city of gold Um, they don't have the diary but they know where it is Rafe has also been kidnapped by Singh. He and Key team up. They escape. Um, Meanwhile, John B. is reunited with Big John, who is also in Barbados, coincidentally. Um, Ringing those bells. He's Bring it on home, John B. (laughs) (laughs) That's what... (laughs) Bring it on home, John B. with the bells. It's so silly. Oh, my God. Um, But they, they reunite. Everybody makes their way back to OBX. Um, turns out that Big John, kind of a dick, doesn't care about his son's safety, well-being. He just wants to find the gold. Um, and then speaking of bad dads, Ward comes back to OBX. He says he's there to make amends. He just wants to help Sarah. That's not true. He makes everything worse. Um, eventually, everybody heads down to South America in search of El Dorado and the treasure. And of course, chaos ensues. The wackadoo show just just gets more wackadoo in season three. I mean, I could not have guessed where this was going to go for this season. I mean, it's also funny because, like, obviously it's always been a show about treasure hunting and it's things like that, but this one feels like they're dabbling in, like, not the supernatural, but, like, these, like, mystical ancient elements. Yeah, definitely. Like, the, 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 the... I know, the thing. The thing, the, the artifact, thing. The, the stone. Artifact. I don't remember what it's called. I don't called. remember the name. It all gets a little convoluted, a I will say, statue. in this season. Yeah, but like they have to position it and it lights up, which is like, okay, like that's some Indiana Jones shit. Which, I like that, though. I, I like the upset. Indiana Jones shit. I thought that was good. That like brought me back into it, kind of like the mystical, magical maybe elements. Yeah. I was like, this is something we haven't done before here. So what were your overall thoughts then on season three? I thought it was fun. You know, I didn't love season two that much. And I felt like when we came back with season three, I was like, oh, we're back. Like, this feels fun. This is 
action packed. There was so much to this season. And I overall, like, I really liked it. Yeah, I think too, like, season two just started on such a, like, a down note. Like, yeah. the pokes are separated. They think that John B and Sarah are dead. It's, like, depressing. And they're, the fun of it is when they're all together and they're all interacting. So, like, the fact that we get six of them now with the addition of Cleo all together most of the time. And even when they're fighting, this, there's still, like, those intergroup dynamics. Like, it's just, it's just a step above season two for sure. Yeah. And I love that we start out with Poglandia. Like, how much fun is that I, I mean them on their own little island like that's what I want I could have watched the whole season with them just on that island I was like you can't get rescued yet I want more of this I needed more than this 20 minutes I know they're sleeping on the beach JJ made a sign like they're spear fishing all sorts of crazy shit it's it's fun but in even in that first episode like we are off to the races oh yeah like we're on the island we're off. We're getting rescued. We're in Barbados. We're going back home. We're stealing boats. There's so many gunshots. Like, there is just so much action in this season. and it, But it feels like a little, like more elevated action I would say yeah I mean there's a plane crash for one <laughs> like <laughs> and they all survive they totally fine no worries all good yeah like they're getting chased by dogs Singh is a major villain like you said they're stealing boats they're like it's you know more shootings and r lots of running the whole like home alone like booby trapped like abandoned hotel or whatever yeah, I think in like yeah episode two like that was crazy but also like really fun like as someone who loved home alone I was like this is like hijinks I know I think I like those like added hijinks like because this show is wacky like you have to watch it knowing it's wacky and that like it's not gonna be like season one it's just like we're real treasure hunters now oh yeah we're not pooks pooks <laughs> every episode <laughs> I do this every app I do this <laughs> We are not yeah, Hogs versus Kooks anymore as like the main plot point. Um, no. You know, we are full on in the treasure. So I think, um, yeah, I just like those added story elements. Yeah, we're going for it. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I like when they go for it. For yeah. Sure. So someone who is really going for it in season three is Big John. We got to talk about Big John. I have so many thoughts okay. about this. Well, where should we begin? Well, we should remember that we end season two and it's revealed that he's alive. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of the big reveal at the end. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Like I had a feeling he was alive. Right. But I'm so happy this is real. And then we get to know Big John in season three. And wow, I hated that man. Yeah, real, real shit dad. Yeah, horrible. Like, I think the worst dad. Worse than Ward, in my opinion. I'm going, I'm saying it. I think I'm I... I'm saying it. It's, yeah, I think because, like, Ward... Like, you know he's full of shit. Like, Sarah yeah. realizes very quickly he's full of shit. And John B., I think because he lost his dad and didn't get to say goodbye, he wants to believe in it a little more. And I think because he has more in common with J Big John, yeah, yeah, like, it's harder for him to see that, like, Big John does not have his best interests at heart. I think, too, a lot of what Ward does is for his children in a messed up way. Yeah. But like, you can tell that like he cares about them. True. And I just felt like Big John was just causing more danger and trouble than I've ever seen. And just fully killing people. Like that man was out of control. Murders two men in front of his son and then is like, help me get rid of the bodies. And also you can't tell your friends about this and we can't trust your friends who have saved his life many times. Like, like didn't even blink twice. Crazy, crazy man. Like psychopath. And I just, I'm sorry, like the way that he spoke and ran and like everything about him just bothered me. Like, come on, boy, come on, come on, boy. <laughs> yeah, he's a little every bit of a cartoon. Every two seconds, <laughs> every two seconds. Yeah. It was, a, that's a good word. It was just a little cartoonish. And I think when we're waiting around for this for so long, it was just a lot. Although I am happy that I felt like they flipped the switch on us. You know, we thought that he was going to be this like good dad mm. and like almost this kind of like magical figure in John B's life or like everything with John B was going to go right now. Yeah. Like, he has his dad. He's good. Mm -hmm. um, he'll be OK. And I like that they flipped the switch that I really did not expect Big John to be so awful. Yeah. It also it 
forces John B into the position of having to like really make adult choices. Yes. Whereas like before he's without a dad. So he's sort of like this kid still who's like clinging to his friends as family, but he's like, you know, desperate for revenge or whatever. But now he has to choose between his family and his friends who have become his family. And he really has to face this sort of like moral dilemma, um, which just sort of, I don't, I don't want to say elevates it, but like yeah, it's, it's no. a harder, it's a harder choice. I think to like realize that like your dad is not the person you thought he was yeah. and he might be t- steering you down the wrong path. I know. I like that overall story that we got with that throughout the season. And I feel like it's like similar to also what Sarah goes mm-hmm. through with war. Like I like the two of them kind of trying to figure out their dads a little bit more and trying to figure out what to do. I mean, do we stick with each other? Do we go against each other? I mean, Big John is literally trying to pull John B away from Sarah. Oh, yeah. He's like, you can't trust her. She's a Cameron. Like, yeah. you know, not knowing how she has sacrificed so much for John B while yeah. he was away. Exactly. So. You keep Sarah's name out of your mouth. Yeah. John how B. dare you? Um, one of my favorite, though, things um, like interactions between John B and Big John. I'm definitely going to get that mixed up it's during con- this podcast. It's just like the flipping of it is so confusing. I know. Well, so they did have some like nice fatherly moments. I did like when they were on the boat back to OBX together and it was like just the two of them. And that was when we really saw kind of even the flashbacks of their story. Mm. And we kind of understood a little more of like, okay, Big John wasn't really always there for him. Yeah. Um, But I did like one interaction where John B was telling Big John he's married. (laughs) And and he goes, oh God, she's not pregnant, is she? (laughs) I don't know why that was my Big John impression. That was the worst Big John (laughs) impression. But he's like, oh no, don't tell me she's pregnant. Um... (laughs) And and John B says, no, we don't have time for those extracurriculars or oh, something yeah. like that. But I thought that was so funny because I felt like that was kind of a little like thing about the show. Yeah, it's a little self-aware. Like, yeah, I felt like it was a show talking about itself of being like, this is not all about the relationship. So like, I know you want these like teen drama elements Mm -hmm. and like relationship drama but like there's no time for that we're looking for treasure yeah exactly we're fighting for our lives here we don't have time to to sneak away um but we did get some relationship stuff this season some new developments should we start with our favorite one Uh, first i mean jj and key finally get together after three Uh, seasons oh my god that was a slow burn not until like the end of episode nine do they finally finally kiss I couldn't believe how long we had to wait for that. I mean, that was kind of crazy. I I get relationships aren't at the forefront. I get it. You're telling us that. But I needed it a little earlier. Well, and I think what's frustrating is that they come so close a few times in the earlier half of the season. Yeah. And they get interrupted or somebody pulls away and then JJ freaks out and pushes Key away. And she tries to call him on it. And then she's like, fine, whatever. Um, But, you know, he, he shows up for her. He rescues her. And... They actually, I love it. Like they say, I love you before they kiss. And like, that's like a, I think it right. It's right for them. Yeah. Well, we really see like their friendship yes. throughout the season, especially early on, like in Poglandia, they're together, mm-hmm. like fishing. You can tell like there's this like deep bond between mm-hmm. them. And then Pope comes in and blows that up, which really annoyed me. Like, just get out of their business. Like, you had a little thing with her a while ago, it seems. At least for us, that was several years ago as viewers. And, like, we just do not care anymore. I mean, I will say, in fairness, like, JJ tries to talk to him about it. And Pope's like, it's fine. It'll be fine. I just need time. So, like, he is trying to be like... Like, I'm not going to stop you. It's just it's just going to take me some time to, to adjust. Well, yeah. also, all this has only happened over the course of how long? Like, I know. It's been years for us, but this was like... <laughs> like Okay, they were on that island, Six though, weeks, though, at first. least six, six weeks. Who knows? They didn't, how did they have water? What are they I doing? Know. I mean, we can't ask answers. these questions. Save it for the as-ifs. You yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, but we see that a lot when they have to leave Key behind. Yeah. When she's kidnapped by saying they have to leave her. And like JJ is the one who's like so distraught over it. Like the rest of them are like, you know, she's tough. She'll be fine. We'll figure out a way. We'll come back for her. And JJ is the one who's like 
constantly pushing them to go back and get her. And he did the same thing with John B on that boat too. He was like, we are not leaving Barbados without John B. Meanwhile, Sarah Cameron's like, let's go. I <laughs> was dying. I was proud of her in that moment. I know. I was too, actually. Yeah. But yeah, JJ doesn't leave any poke behind. No. That's why we love him. Mm-hmm. I'm very happy we got their relationship. And... I mean, I hope we get more like I that can't be it. I need more of it for sure. No, we barely got any of it. We just got the build and then like one moment where they're like kissing. And then in the finale, they're not really romantic at all. They're in the same space, but they're not like talking about their relationship. I think we all just want more because they're an interesting duo. Yeah. Like they're very different. Yes. And I think that that's just what makes them a good pair. And it makes them a little bit more interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like JJ's backstory is so interesting compared like to hers and they're so opposites like in that way. But I feel like they're the two people who are really always like there for everybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just I want to see more of them together to see how it all plays out. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see that relationship grow. A relationship I don't want to see grow <laughs> is, um, you know, Cleo and Pope. I could have just done without, honestly. It feels like they put them together because they were the last two left standing. I would have enjoyed like a nice like brother sister vibe with them, yeah. to be honest. Like if she's living with his family now, I thought that could have been kind of fun. Like, oh, we're like family now or something. Yeah, it does feel that way. And then when they kiss, it's kind of like, OK, sure. Yeah, yeah. it's not to like the end no really. yeah it feels- just kind of feels a little bit out of nowhere mm-hmm. we don't need everybody to no. be in a relationship where we're putting the relationships on the back burner in the show especially Ex- right exactly and she talks about how like she's never had her own room before like she yeah. finally has like a family and so i think that, that storyline is more important and more interesting than just sticking her with pope because he got shafted or whatever like who cares let them grow as friends as like like you said, his family is yeah, whatever. But I just think that that could have been interesting. And I love Pope's family. I mean, Hayward is uh, maybe one of my favorite characters on this show. So I would have just liked to have maybe like just seen that dynamic of her like learning to have a family with Hayward and, and the, yeah, and, and the, the wife. Thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Hayward and the wife. Hayward and the wife. I don't. We don't know Mrs. the Mrs. Hayward. Thing. Yeah. With the Hayward. Yeah. Like, get me a Christmas card or something with them. <laughs> Cute. Um, well, we need to talk about the best thing that came out of season three. What is that? <laughs> Rafe's haircut. <laughs> that buzz cut is doing wonders. Like, oh my God, what? That was a reveal. That was that was huge for me. My jaw was on the floor. I like, know. Like, I was like, I, but I also don't know if it was just that his haircut before was so bad. It was real bad. It was it real was bad. bad. So it was just such a nice yeah. change. But I mean, he went from boy to man with that buzz cut. Like, he did. Oh, I wa- saw him and I was like, what is happening? Like, am I into Rafe? now like I mean yeah like like, I'll just say I think I am like I can't ignore the buzz cut well I think him and the buzz cut and also when like he's in close quarters with key when they're trapped in Singh's house like I don't know there's some he's like you were always different like you're not like the rest of them and blah 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 okay I'm not gonna lie like I was kind of hoping for that with Key and Ray. You know what it's like, giving? They were just giving good eye contact. He was saying good stuff. Mm-hmm. And he seemed to be more normal around her. Yes. And not so psychotic. That well, you're like, oh, I like this. And maybe she can change him. <laughs> well, I think when he's not trying to impress somebody, he's like not having, he's not acting yeah. so crazy. And you know what that moment is giving? Or that sort of episode, rather? It's very like Klaus rescuing Caroline from the high school and yeah. Vampire Diaries. Yes, I know. You 100%. know that scene. 100%. It is very similar to that. And I thought the exact same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I think just with that haircut, too, like he looks a little mm. bit like those like more 2000s, like mm. teen drama boys. Yeah. I feel like buzz cuts were big like when we were in high school. So that's why we're like, wow. Like Chad Michael Murray's buzz Yeah, cut. yeah exactly. Yeah, what I was thinking. That's what this was given. It was. Like, <laughs> he went from boy to man with that Honestly. buzz cut. Honestly. Wow, that is good. 
and I just want someone to come in and like fix Rafe so bad. Like I just want that to happen. And I understand, like I don't think we're going to get that. <laughs> this isn't that kind of show, but I can't help it. I still want it. We don't know what season four will bring. I know. I'm still crossing my fingers. I know. He, he found a lady this season. Yeah, like a nice little waitress who like gave him some sage advice about, you know, doing the right thing or whatever whatever she said to him. Yeah. It was I was like, Oh, she's good. Keep her around. Exactly. He found himself a nice little pogue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just guessing she's a pogue. No, because she talks about having to like work yeah. for a living or whatever. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> if she has to work for a living. She's not like She him. ain't on figure eight. No. Okay? Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> Good for Rave. All right. We're still hoping and praying for Rave just so we can keep him on this show. Yeah. Okay. So one major new addition we had in season three was our new villain, Sing, Carlos Sing. Um, Short King. Short King. Did you notice that, you guys? Short King Sing. He was so short. (laughs) He was so short. Of course I noticed. Yes. If anyone noticed, it was producer Jesse. Um, I thought he was interesting. Yeah. A little cartoony. 100%. Yeah. But also like fits with the vibe of the season. If we're doing that Indiana Jones type of thing, if we're looking for the city of gold in a diary and there's a painting and all this crap, like, sure, give me a little ridiculous man. Well, and I like that we had like a main villain Mm -hmm. this time. Like we had one main person to fear. Yeah. There wasn't like, all these people or like a thing that we're scared of. Yeah, like it was always like Ward and then plus somebody else. Yeah, like there was always Ward, like multiple people in other yeah, seasons. Yeah, and like Limbry and like yeah. Ward and, and the mysterious like drug dealer guys. Like it was always like unknown. <laughs> I don't even remember. But yeah. yeah, you're right. We had one guy who everyone was afraid of. I think I just wish though that like we just heard about Sing for a while. Like, ooh, he's mysterious. Like, we don't know who he is or what he looks yeah. like yet, but we just keep hearing about him and everyone is telling us how scary he is. Like, yeah. And then I wanted a big reveal because mm-hmm. he comes out in like episode one. Yeah. I mean, he's the one that they he gets kidnapped, taken to his compound. Yeah. Uh, where there are like attack dogs. The compound's terrifying. It's scary. And yeah. we know right off the bat that he is scary because he kills Jimmy. And we hear that. And that's right. like, we're like, shit, that, that man means business. I think that that is why I liked him, too. Of Like, he is scary right off the bat. Yeah. Like, right away, we know he is killing people. And he takes, like, no prisoners. Like, that man does not have a heart. Correct. <laughs> or a soul in his body. Yeah. He is just all about this treasure in El Dorado. I mean, one thing I do want to call out, because I found it to be deeply unsettling, is the oh, fact fun. that when Key gets kidnapped... <laughs> Presumably, he's looking to kidnap all of the the pogues, right? Like, he's trying to capture all of them. Yeah. She gets taken to his compound, and she's in her dirty clothes, and she gets, like, locked in the bedroom. There's, in the wardrobe, is, like, a bunch of red silk dresses yeah. for her to put on. And they're, like, slinky, like, kind of sexy dresses. And it's, like, this is, you just have this on hand to give to your teenage captive, like... Like, multiple sizes, though. He had multiple right, sizes yes. for her to pick from. But he was anticipating capturing a woman and yeah. putting her in. Like, that felt like some weird, like, Bond villain shit to me. Like, yeah. that you would see in that type of movie. And I was like, oh, I was like, they're still teenagers. Like, maybe, maybe not. Like, I know. Season four, I'll give you a pass because they're older, yeah. presumably. But, like, they're still in high She's like a junior in high school. Didn't That's love it. That's fair. I felt like they were just throwing so much stuff at the wall to be mm. like, he's scary. He's terrifying. Yeah. Like, we don't know what's going to happen. And they were like, we're just throwing everything sure. out there. Yeah. I feel like in that moment, that was when I was like, oh, shit, this guy's like creepy and scary. Like, what is he going to do? I'm not sure. Right. Rafe better get her out of there. Honestly, yeah. She's in better hands with him. Like, she takes her chances, too. Yeah. She's like, you know, the better the devil, you know, so... Ooh, the better devil you know. Yeah. Wow, love that. I don't think I've heard that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're learning things. Well, as we've talked about before on our previous Outer Banks episodes, there are a lot of dramatic, over-the-top moments on this show. So what would you say were some of those most dramatic moments of season three? What stuck out to you? I mean, I think the big one, it has to be 
in the finale when Ward sacrifices himself to save Sarah. I mean, it's in slow-mo. I know, right? Singh is dead, but his his henchman comes out of the jungle. Um, he has the gun on Sarah, and Ward recognizes what's about to happen, looks at Sarah, smiles, and then runs at this guy, gets shot, and like attacks him and tackles him over the cliff. That was a big moment. I, and just like a moment that we've kind of been waiting for. I don't know. Waiting for is the right word. Um, I mean, it felt like, you know, this season was about Ward trying to redeem himself. And in some at the beginning of the season, it does seem like he's genuine in that. He's trying to sell the cross or donate the cross to a museum to make up for everything. He's trying to help the Pogues get to South America to prove to Sarah that he's a good guy. He gives her the condo, etc. And then again, he can't help himself and he betrays them and is going to kill Big John. But then when his daughter's in danger, finally, it's like it finally clicks in his brain. Like he steps up. Yeah, he finally does it. He steps up. He saves Sarah. To me, Ward is redeemed. Okay. I I mean, I just feel like (laughs) we saw this journey. I felt like he was trying this season. Mm -hmm. He hugs Rafe. Rafe just wanted a hug. Yeah. He saves Sarah, um, who he's obsessed with. <laughs> it's, yeah. But I don't know. I feel like it was just a good journey, I think. Um, I do believe he's actually finally dead. I think so, too. I mean, they showed him fully, like, falling over the cliff. Like, right. that guy's dead. Um, I feel like they even, like, showed the body this yes, time. Yes, they they're show. Like, if yeah, like, they if do. any question is lingering, Ward is dead. You never know with this show. <laughs> I know, I know. But I think it was a good way for him to go out. Yeah. I mean, is he redeemed for like everything that he did? No. But I feel like at least he went out more on top. Yeah. He went out um, trying to to make amends by by saving his daughter and yeah. in and also her boyfriend and everybody else in, you know. All those pogues. Exactly. Yeah. Isn't it like the bare minimum, though, to like. Well, I agree. <laughs> but I gotta your life say, if Big your John was about... like barely sacrificing <laughs> yeah. himself I'm for not these saying kids. Big John either, threw but... a flare. Okay. Like, come on, dude. Again, when I'm comparing Ward to Big John, <laughs> Ward wins, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. I think I just like that actor. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. I also just liked Ward as a character. So I am kind of sad to see him go because I do feel like when he showed up, you were like, oh boy, what's going to (laughs) happen? Like, he's so like sneaky and Mm -hmm. smart about it and manipulative. And you don't really know what he's going to do because he still loves Sarah. So it was always like, oh, what, what's going to happen next? So I will kind of miss that element a little bit. Yeah. Unless he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what about you? Did you have another um, big shocking moment in season three? I mean, I got to say, I did not see coming Topper burning down the chateau with the pogues inside of it. I was floored. I feel like that's something Rafe would do. But Topper, I was really floored. And I thought that we were headed towards Topper getting in the group. You know, he was kind of in with them on one of the schemes, helping him out. And I actually like that because I feel like he added a comedic element to that. Yeah. Um, when they were trying to get the cross off the train, he kind of represented the audience with that. Yeah. Where he's like, this is crazy. What are we doing? Like, my yeah. dad's going to kill me. Like, if we ruin his truck. Yeah. And I thought it was so funny. And they were doing this, like, crazy thing, but they were able to keep it lighthearted mm-hmm. because of that. Yeah. So I really like Topper in that moment. And then, of course, we do have the Topper Sarah makeout, Mm -hmm. which, you know, isn't great. I like that at least. I thought it made sense of why it happened. Of like Sarah Cameron is alone. Like John B has left her. Yeah. She can't go to um, she can't go to Key's house. Right. JJ doesn't have a house. And it's also just like not even really like emotionally available to like speak to her. Yep. She can't go back to her home. Right. She has no family really left. Yeah. She starts hanging out with the kooks, remembering like, oh, this is kind of the good life. I can actually take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> Like, no one's shooting at me. Exactly. Yeah. So I kind of get in that moment of how that happened. Mm-hmm. I I liked at least that it wasn't just out of complete left field, I thought. I agree. I kind of wanted it to be 
selfishly like oh they almost kiss and then she pulls away yeah like if she had come close and then realized in that moment like no like this is just like me falling into something that's familiar when i'm feeling low like and then stopping herself i wish they hadn't fully kissed but i get it because that's what pushes topper over the edge when she keeps using him like i will say yeah she does in his defense she uses him and manipulates him over and over again all to help john b and so i i'm not saying it's okay to burn down john b's house with people inside of it (laughs) but i get why he's angry (laughs) Yeah, no. I mean, I was also shocked that they fully kiss and made out. Yeah. And it was like several seconds. Yeah. I was like, whoa, I definitely thought they were going to do the pullback thing. Yeah. And it's just another way, though, of like, this show keeps you on your toes that It does. Because they go there. Right. And then she like, they fall asleep like on the beach together. Not great. No, not good. She's a married woman. <laughs> yes. With a dirty bandana around her wrist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, Topper burning down that chateau. Wow. I mean, that was wild. I was truly shocked by that moment. Yeah. I not so much if it had been the empty house or if he had like burned something else, I'd be like, not great, but like fine. But when he sees them inside, well, he also he sees them like about to have sex through the window. And that's really what triggers him. So again, just he does. He pulls a full Rafe Cameron and, you know turns into an arsonist i just didn't think he was that psychotic no because i think with with topper you're like he's angry he's sad he's maybe a jerk but he's not like mentally unstable whereas rafe you're like he's got problems a lot of daddy issues yeah yeah and topper just seems kind of like a a rich jerk i know i just wanted i wanted more for topper i think a little bit well we'll see what season four brings maybe maybe it's you know yeah maybe things are different um what else anything else um Um, you know i just want to say i didn't really believe that jj died when his bike crashed off the overpass but i i felt key's fear in that moment and again another another hint at how strong their bond is because she is like distraught when she thinks for a second that he's dead and then maybe you should kiss then yeah i mean i get it you're still on the run but like (laughs) i think we could have had a hug yeah, you could have like maybe we got a hug, but, but a kiss. It's almost like more interesting because she's angry about it, you know. And that's true. So and, and that's one of those like don't ever do that to me again type of thing where you're like, I do oh, love she those cares. moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so good. Um, yeah, that was another very dramatic moment. None of these folks will die. <laughs> yeah, I'm not worried about that for a yeah. second. Yeah. Um, who was your MVP of season three? You know, I'm gonna have to give it to Sarah Cameron. That's fair. That's a really good good choice. Yeah, thank you. She she comes through multiple times when they are in Barbados. They're waiting for John B. And they're like, we can only wait so long and then we have to go. He's not back in time. And JJ's like, we have to wait. We have to wait. And she's like, no. And she drives that boat out of the harbor because the police are after them or whoever's after them. Um, she is the one who, you know, gets the truck from Topper for the mm-hmm. to steal the cross. She convinces Topper to drop the charges against John B. She gets the boat from her, or the plane rather, from her dad. She figures out the puzzle in South America that leads them to the treasure. Like she comes through over and over again. Okay, I love Sarah Cameron this season. She is a different character, I feel like. Mm-hmm. She is so much more of a leader. She has grown into herself, grown into a leader of these pogues and leads them when John B is not there. And John B was gone from the group a lot this season. And I felt like Sarah really stepped up and I loved it. I felt like this season, too, um, maybe because she didn't get shot this season um, (laughs) and almost die. But I felt like she was less of a damsel in distress. A hundred percent. Not like she was always like fully like that. But I just loved seeing her really in on the action Mm -hmm. and taking action. Yeah. And like just yeah solving everything for everybody basically the entire time yeah she thinks ahead when ward calls her to the condo she calls the police to the house next door so that they're within shouting distance you know she's like always like planning and plotting and scheming in a way that none of the rest of them are because they're all hung up on their own crap and she's like no i'm a pogue now i think this season a lot too is about is she really a pogue or is she going to go back to being a kook and by the end of it even ward says like you're not one of us anymore you've made your choice and she says that and she's like this is what i choose i choose john b i choose the pogues like that's who i am 
I love that storyline throughout the season. I just thought that was really interesting and also a callback to season one. Mm-hmm. And I like that it took a couple seasons for her to go full Pogue. We know she's not going to stray anymore. Yeah. And I love that Ward said that. I feel like that was kind of like the nail in the coffin with it. Yeah. And Big John actually finally accepted her in the end. Mm-hmm. Thank yeah. God. His daughter-in-law. I know. <laughs> yeah she has part of that bandana he's probably just bad about that (laughs) yeah (laughs) um but yeah sarah cameron loved her this season and it made me excited for more seasons with her because i feel like it really showed like she's a smart one in this group Mm -hmm. and i feel like she started off as people not trusting her and like not trusting her opinion on things really either and she really just showed I'm the main Pogue bitch now, okay? (laughs) Yeah. I'm not just Mrs. Pogue. I'm the main Pogue bitch. Yeah. Comma bitch. (laughs) It works both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So love Sarah Cameron, but I have to go with a different MVP. Sure. I mean, I got to go with JJ. (laughs) Two seasons in a row. Did I pick him last I think season you did. too? Oh wow! But well. listen, JJ, I I said this. He can always be MVP because he just I just love JJ. I, I, I think my heart just like goes out to him every season when he comes home to the house and it is like eviction notice mm, and all taped up. Yeah, it just is so sad because he truly has no one. Exactly. Like he has the pogues, but like John B's got his dad back now, and JJ still has like his. He's got nobody and he can't go to Keys and he can't go to Pope's because Cleo is already there. Like, yeah, you know, so it's like he has nobody, but he is always the one who is there for everybody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is getting key out of Kitty Hawk. He is, you know, helping John B to try and get to South America. And maybe his plans aren't always the smartest. Nope. He always comes through or figures out a way. He takes big swings. He does. And, and I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, we need him. somebody like that on this show. And he's just, he's funny. I like some, I like his comedic moments. Yeah. For sure. I think like he kind of adds that to the group Mm -hmm. and it's needed like i like when the show is a little more lighthearted. yeah and jj is the one who brings that for the most part yeah yeah so shout out to jj forever i just want him to have a mom (laughs) yeah (laughs) we just want we just can we see jj a little happier in season four please for i know i know it's like some peace it's too sad I know. So I guess before we can see if JJ's happy in season four, we should talk about the ending of season three. Well, we definitely got to talk about this because what an ending. We finally got some gold. We did. They finally win. They get the gold. They get to claim it for themselves. Nobody steals it from them. And they get recognized for their efforts. I was surprised, actually, that they actually got some gold. I mean, did you think that it was really going to happen? No, I thought that somebody was going to take it, either Ward or Singh or like, I don't know, the government was going to confiscate it because technically it belongs to wherever they are in South America. But, you know, they they bring it home to to North Carolina for whatever reason. It felt... It felt really good that nothing went wrong in the end with that. Like, finally, you know, we just, we got some happiness. We right. needed it. We got two dead dads, but we got the gold. <laughs> Screw those dads. They sucked anyway. Honestly, yeah. Not a good dad on this show. Nope. Not um, one. Well, except Hayward. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Hayward. Sorry, like- Hayward. Um, it just was... I feel like I was giddy with joy. I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. Well, we should also note that um, there is a time jump, a significant time jump. 18 months. 18 months after they, yeah, they leave with the gold. We see them and they are being honored by the community. People are applauding them. They look dressed up. Yes, they're they're clean. JJ's in a leather jacket. We love this. You know, Pope's in a suit. Everyone looks showered and fresh as a daisy. We get a little exposition dump about where they are in their lives now. Pope's going to go to school. Key's saving the turtles. JJ has the charter boat. John B. and Sarah are running a surf shop. Great. All seems well. 
I like that we got a quick line of like where everybody yeah. is too. But I will say I wanted somebody to show up in like a fancy car or something. Like show me the wealth, you know? I know they're so responsible with their their riches. Show me a home, like show me something. I wanted to see the wealth for sure. I'm like we have seen them unshowered for 3 seasons now. Dirt all over their face, running all over the place. I wanted to see a nice big TV. Mm -hmm. JJ needed a new hot tub, like something a little more than that. So I'm definitely hoping like we get something. It'd be nice to have like, I mean, they need homes, first of all. Like, where do they live? Well, I like though, then that they didn't give us everything. They gave us kind of a little tidbit of like where everybody is now. And then... We're starting a whole nother story, it seemed, right there at the end. They threw that in in, like, the last couple minutes. This weird, creepy man um, comes up to them at the ceremony where they're being awarded, acknowledged. Yeah, it's we don't unclear. Know. It's just they're just saying, good job, kids, the basically. Town, the town is finally embracing them. Yep. After the cops have chased them around for three years. Um. And yeah, this old creepy man um, comes up and says he has this journal and turns out it's Blackbeard's (laughs) end of show. So good. I loved it. I love that we set something up already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you shocked that the show is not ending here? You know, um, yes and no i think like it would have felt like a good conclusion because because they did end it happily yeah and we had this time jump i would have like if it had ended i'd be like great like they figured it out they've got their setup for life whatever um but at the same time it's popular yeah and it's fun and so like i think as long as people are still watching it like i can see why they're gonna continue to make more and more seasons but i do worry about like how far can you take it you know yeah no i agree with that I think I was just shocked that we were ending it at a place where they found gold and we're setting up another story. Mm-hmm. Like, I just did the, not really see that coming. Yeah, at the same time, because they are, it's sort of the first time where they've really wrapped up something. But yeah, we get the start of something new, as Zach Efron once said. <laughs> We love the start of something new. You know, I started to say that and I was like, oh God, a song from High School Musical. Um, we love High School Musical we here. Do. We look forward to covering it. Yeah, <laughs> special for the Patreon. So we've seen three seasons, mm-hmm. more to come. But how would you rank these three seasons? Um, I would have to go season one, season three, season two. So one is your top. One is my top because I think it's just it sets everything up. Yeah. You know, um, it's just like it's more grounded, but still kind of crazy. And I think it was just so addictive from the get go that I was like, I think it has to be my top. And it's, you know, it's the beginning of everything. It's the beginning of John B. and Sarah Cameron. It's like Key and Sarah repairing their relationship or getting the dynamics of everybody. So I think, yeah, I think season one is probably my favorite so far. Yeah, season one is definitely my favorite. I just don't think that there's anything like season one of Outer Banks. Like these other two just were not the same, I don't think. But I did like season three overall. Yeah, definitely an improvement over season two. Season two did not do it for me. It was it was kind of tough to get through at the beginning and then it picked yeah. up. But um, season three, I was flying through that. I was I like, know. this is so much fun. I'm having a great time. I saw these girlies online were saying season three was the worst. And I was like, wrong. Ooh, I disagree on that one for sure. I don't even remember what happened in season two, to be honest. Like if you asked to give me to give a synopsis right now, I'd be like, They're looking for that cross. Mm -hmm. Um, We're in the Bahamas at one point. Sarah gets shot. Yeah, Sarah gets shot. But those are the main points. Yeah. Well, should we do some as ifs? We haven't done them in a while. I'm ready. So if you recall, this is the moment in the show where we um, rant about something for 15 seconds and we have to include the phrase as if like share from Clueless. So Jillian, do you want to kick us off? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. And we're going to start the clock in three Two, one, go. Sarah Cameron coming back to the OBX and is still in the outfit from Poglandia. As if. That girl survived a plane crash being shot at in Barbados and she still can't get a new shirt? (laughs) I mean, I'm kind of like 
as it's like how did it not fall off of her body is it stuck to her skin at this point I like know. did they were they washing clothes on that island like what i just i have so many questions i just feel like you could have stole a shirt from yes. somebody in barbados or something even one of sing's red dresses at that point honestly yeah all right claire's up we're gonna start for 15 seconds in three two one go Six weeks on an island without a credible source of fresh water, as if, how are they surviving? I know they're spearfishing. Maybe there's like some coconuts or some berries and shit, but they are like sleeping on the beach unprotected from the elements and they're not sunburned. They're just looking tan and fit. I was wondering about the fresh water thing. I was like, are they getting it from like a tree, like in the Hunger Games or something? Like, <laughs> what is going on with that? I needed just a little bit more of an explanation of like how they were surviving. And I needed maybe a little more dirt on their face. I was like, why wouldn't you guys stay here? You look great. <laughs> I know. I mean, like, I guess we're meant to believe that they're like washing themselves in the ocean. But like, still, they're not like, I don't know. What Just even more floored me, though, about Poglandia was they're all there playing a game at night after six weeks together on this island. Oh, I'd be like, I'd be done. I'd be like, I yeah. don't want to speak to a single soul for months. I needed like a fight to break out or something. Like, I just needed something like that because I was like, this is the craziest part. They're just playing games here together yeah. all night. Yeah. No other form of entertainment, not there even was, a book. There was like literally no conflict in any way. They were the having, li like they were literally. <laughs> living their best lives on this island they for once weren't being like shot at i know god i could never i would perish after like a week i mean i'm sorry i don't know if i could be playing games with you ladies for six <laughs> weeks straight no i'd be like this Truth is your is side true. of the island i get this cliff you yeah. get this cave like we would not be friends after that no absolutely <laughs> no. not i would at least need a break yeah <laughs> We have like separate sleeping areas like we'd come together maybe for an hour during the day and be like you're still alive great Oh, my God. I love it. Well, we did it. We broke down all of season three of Outer Banks. If you haven't done so already, be sure to listen to our other Outer Banks episodes. We recap season one and season two and give all of our opinions and thoughts. So be sure to check that out as well. Yes, and come back um, because we will be talking about season four, part one, after it drops. You can listen to that episode, this episode, all of our past episodes, wherever you get your podcasts. And please remember to um, subscribe, rate and review us, give us five stars. You can also find us on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube at previously on underscore teen TV. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening.